You know, I just realized that these are supposed to be chains, and in episode one they were chains, in episode two they were blocks. I can explain myself, and as a matter of fact, these aren't the correct things either. Uh, those should be coins. What happened was I had a rather unfortunate occurrence, and I had recorded several episodes and had to re-record them from episode one. Episode one came out okay, and I had to re-record everything. So that's why there was an inconsistency between episode one and two. Uh, but we'll fix that really quickly here in this uh, in this level one here. So what we'll do is we'll just take and replace these, I believe, with coins, if I recall. And maybe these were blocks, and I think these were chains. I think everything else is correct if I remember correctly. Let's add a little more chainage here, because chains are fun. Okay, saving that. Let's go to the game level. I want to add a color rect back to behind everything. Actually, and I want to turn on snapping. Let's turn on the grid. I'll hit G to turn the grid on. And I want to add a color rect like so. Let's let's make it a very nice dark blue. And I'll show you what that does. So that will be behind our level so that it will look nice and dark. And what'll, what's nice about that is we will be able to change that from script if we so desire to do. So that's the idea. And, um, you know, I was thinking it might be nice to have a camera 2D that we can utilize so that if we need to at any time, we can actually have the camera, if we want to do it, we can have the camera follow us and make levels larger than just a single screen. So I'm going to go ahead and add that and we'll say, yes, this is the current camera, but we're not going to, we're not going to make it follow anything just yet. And we will have its offset. Uh, let's see, what was it? It's offset 324 is the resolution, I believe. So that would be uh, 162, I think. And then uh, 168 would be uh, 84. Yeah. Let's go ahead and run that again just to make sure that the camera looks correct. I believe it'll be fine. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, I'm going to keep that camera there just, like I said, just in case we want to uh, later on, if we want to do anything like that. So we have that. Um, and then we were talking about maybe going to the player and making him, allowing him to move a little bit, right? So to do that, we're going to need to go into project settings and add a few actions to the input map. Let's add a left, a right, and a jump action. Not a jump. Look at that. Crazy. Crazy me misspelling things. Jump. For the left, we'll use a key. We'll do it left. For the right, we'll also use a key. We'll use the right arrow key. For the jump, we'll use... Oops. I think for the jump, I'm going to also use the up key. We may change that later. But for now, that's what we're going to do. Beautiful. So let's go back to the player, open up his script, and let's do a... Let's do a nice little function here so that we can encapsulate a horizontal movement because I'm thinking that we're going to want to be able to uh, basically allow some configurability here in the player as to how he jumps, when he jumps, if he jumps, have air jumps and all that kind of stuff, whether he can move in the air, that kind of thing. So in order to do that, we can break up some of his movements and such into various functions, and one of them will be called horizontal. That'll allow us to have him move, let him move horizontally. So what we'll do is we'll say something like if input dot is action pressed, just pressed. No, it's pressed, not just pressed, but pressed. Um, right. We'll want to set his velocity, his x velocity anyway, to some kind of speed. That means. I think I'd like to be able to set that from the from the inspector.
but we'll set it to like something like 65 for now. So we'll say if he presses to the right, then set his velocity to equal to speed. And then uh, we also want to make sure his flip on his horizontal is not, he's not flipped. And otherwise, if his input dot is action pressed left, we we'll want to do the same thing, but we'll want to negate both of these. So we'll say negative speed and we'll say true. Just, just like that. And I'm thinking we may also want to do another thing and allow him to, him or the player, to control the character in the air. So if we do allow that, then we need a variable for that. So we'll start out with it being true. So what we'll do here is we'll do else if. So in other words, if we are If we're on the floor, which is another one of those functions that we have from um, the kinematic body 2D, if we're on the floor or uh, air control is true, then we'll set the x component of the velocity to zero. To zero. You see? Okay. So now, uh, what we would desire here then? Now, otherwise, we want to. We are now. We want to take care of some animation type stuff. So, if we're on the floor, if our, our is our character on the floor? If he is, um, and if the x velocity is equal to zero. Then we want to play an animation, right? Play. We want to play idle because that means he's not doing anything. Else, we want to play We want to play walk. It's as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. So there's our horizontal. So horizontal takes into account if we're on the ground and we or if well if we're on the ground then we can control our x velocity actually well, we may have to redo this but for now this is good enough so let's do process let's let's add our process function we will have to redo that actually I see some problems there. Let's go ahead and call horizontal here and run it and see what happens. Let's see if we can walk around anyway. And we can, which is great. Well, it looks like that worked and that's fantastic. We have our character moving to the left and to the right horizontally. Next time, I think we will work on the jump, including having him be able to air jump and tweaking the jump parameters perhaps until we like them and they feel good. And until then, we'll see you on the next one.